News for you, awesome websites without code. Hey, what's up, Muser, and welcome to day 10 of building a chef website in Adobe Muse. Today we're on the one to one fixed with breakpoint. So I'll click on the day 10 folder. And here we have the one to one fixed with breakpoint.muse file and the day 10 one to one breakpoint PNG. So I'll double click. And today we're going to set the minimum width breakpoint to the same size as the largest breakpoint. So I'm going to go ahead and close this here. And I'll go back to the root of the course folder. And the first thing I'll do here is double click on the chef website starting file dot muse. So I'll go ahead and double click and I'll double click on the home page. Now, before I show how to add a one to one fixed width breakpoint, I'm just going to show how that looks in the browser or on different devices. So we have the website here and I've already uploaded the one to one fixed width breakpoint to a live server. So I'm going to go to museforyoushop.com and it's chef website dash one two one and I'll leave a link in the description area below in case you want to check it out yourself. And basically a one to one breakpoint, what it does is that it makes it so the website fits on any device larger than or any device smaller than the specific breakpoint you set it to. So rather than having to add tablet and mobile breakpoints, the site will fit on the, on the device and it'll just be really small. So with certain websites, this can work really well, depending on the different elements that you have on your website. The user might have to pinch and zoom at times to view the smaller elements on the website. So basically this is the website with the one-to-one -one fixed width breakpoint. And I'm gonna use browserstack.com. It's one of the testing tools uh, we'll be using on day 15 to test the website. And I have a browser stack Chrome extension and I'll go ahead and test it on an iPhone 6S. So I'll go ahead and click. And here's the website on an iPhone 6S. So as we can see, the entire website fits within the device. So rather than having the elements laid out differently on different width breakpoints, the entire website just fits on the device. And again, this can save a lot of time if the website still looks good and if the user is able to interact with the elements on the website. So I'll go ahead and test it on a few other devices. I'll test it on an iPad Air 2. So in Browser Stack, you can test different devices. And I really, really like uh, Browser Stack because it gives you uh, not only the size of the device, but all the the internals like the operating system and how the website will actually function within the device. So here we have the website on an iPad Air 2. And as we can see, the entire website fits within the device, no matter what the size of the device is. So this is an iPad Air 2 and I'll scroll down and we have the entire website on the device. And I'll do one more. I'll do a Google Nexus 7. And here we have the website on a Nexus 7. Looks good. So the website fits within that particular device. On the desktop version, because we're using a 1280 breakpoint, which I'm going to explain in a moment, the website doesn't go across. There's no page expansion when using a fixed width breakpoint. So as we can see, the elements get cut off here. With elements that are stretched to browser width, like this background here, the element goes across the entire page. So stretch to browser width does work with fixed width breakpoints, but uh, different elements. So as you can see in the about us and nutrition section, with these elements in fluid width, we pinned them to the left and the right side of the browser. With fixed width breakpoints, the site gets cut off at the specific breakpoint and the elements don't move within the site. So as we can see, none of the elements are responding to the browser width. It's just a fixed width breakpoint with the elements inside of the website. So to create a one-to-one -one fixed width breakpoint, it's actually very easy. Uh, you just go into Muse, and here we're in the breakpoints bar, or I'll zoom in here into the breakpoints bar, and rather than a fluid width breakpoint, we want a fixed width breakpoint. So to do that, you right click and uncheck fluid width. So just check fluid width here, and it unchecks it. And then we have a fixed width breakpoint, and we can see fluid width is not checked here. So with a fixed width breakpoint, what it does initially is it adds 
a uh, 100 pixel margin to the left and the right of the website. So as we can see here, and let me zoom in a bit. So the breakpoint was set to 1600. And here, let me zoom in. Yeah, so we have here the breakpoint is 1600. So the minimum width of the fixed width breakpoint is 1600. And the entire size of the breakpoint is 1800. And this is because the website isn't moving. The elements within a fixed width breakpoint aren't moving. So Adobe Muse is just adding a bit of padding. So if the user decides to resize the browser, there's a bit of padding to the left and the right side of the breakpoint. When you add another breakpoint, the next breakpoint becomes the minimum width. I might create an entire series on fixed width breakpoints just to talk more about it. But because we're working with fluid width breakpoints in this course, I'm just gonna touch upon it briefly for the one-to-one -one breakpoint. So here we have the 1600 minimum width. And with a one-to-one -one fixed width breakpoint, you wanna use all the real estate that you can on the website. So if I look at the website, we have these panels and we have this extra space to the left and the right. I'm not gonna concern myself too much with the about us and nutri nutrition section at the moment. I just wanna use all the spacing that's on the left and the right side of these panels here. And I'm actually gonna convert this back to a fluid width so I can show an example of using all the real estate within the website. Because if we have a one-to-one -one fixed width breakpoint, I wanna make sure that all the space is used so that the elements don't get too small. When using all the, the space available, the elements can be a little bit larger. So the website has the ability to be a little bit larger within the one-to-one -one fixed width breakpoint. So if I go to the breakpoints bar and I right click and I select fluid width, I'm just gonna resize the website with the breakpoint scrubber tool right up here. I'm gonna resize it until I'm close to those panels. So right around the 1280 breakpoint, which is one of the breakpoints we use for the website, I'm going to apply the fixed width breakpoint. So that's using all the real estate within the site. And if I go to the different sections, we can see it still looks good around the 1280 breakpoint. If I were to get smaller, smaller than 1280, the website would get cut off and these panels wouldn't show. So 1280 is good. It's using a little bit of space here on the left and the right. So we're using all the space we can for the website and it'll allow the site to be the largest it can for the one-to-one -one fixed width breakpoint. So now that I know that 1280 is the breakpoint I want to use, I'm going to go ahead and change this back to a fixed width breakpoint. So I'm going to right click and uncheck fluid width by clicking on it again. And here we can see that fluid width is not checked. So here we can see that it's a 1600 breakpoint with, uh, it's actually an 1800 breakpoint with a 1600 breakpoint minimum width. And that's because we have the 100 pixels to the left and 100 pixels to the right. So I know I want a 1280 breakpoint, and I also know that Adobe Muse adds 200 pixels to the breakpoint that I set. So I wanna set the width of the breakpoint to 1080. So I'm gonna click on the breakpoints bar. I'm gonna right click, select breakpoint properties, and for the page width, I'm gonna say 1080 and I'll click OK. All right, so there we have the 1280 breakpoint with a 1080 minimum width. Now, I don't want any space on the left and the right. I want this breakpoint to use all the space on the website. So to do that, I'm gonna grab the minimum width right up here in the breakpoints bar, and I'm going to drag out until it's the same size as the largest breakpoint, which is 1280. So now the minimum width breakpoint is 1280, and the breakpoint is set to 1280 as well. And that's all we have to do for the fixed width one-to-one -one breakpoint. We wanna use as much space as we can on the website and just set the minimum width breakpoint to the same size as the largest breakpoint. And that's all we have to do there. And now if I go to File, Preview Page, and Browser, we're gonna notice that the footer goes off a little bit because we have to do the same on the, on the master page. So if I go down here, so right now the footer looks okay. So let's see how this looks like in browser stack. So let me go here to browserstack.com and I'll preview on an iPhone 6S. And I'll scroll down here. Looks good, actually it looks good. Let me check out the master page. I might have already done this before I started. The footer looks good. Uh, before when I was working on it, it kind of threw the footer off. If it does do that, just go back to uh, the master page and apply the same properties. So set this to fixed width. So I can right click on the breakpoints bar, uncheck fluid width, go to breakpoint properties, set this to 12 or to 1080. 
and then set the minimum width to the same size as the largest breakpoint here, or the breakpoint size. So they're both 1280. All right, so I'll go back to the plan view and I'll preview one more time and then we'll do a bit, a bit more testing in browserstack.com. So that is a one-to-one -one breakpoint. I did wanna show how to do this as it can save a lot of time. Depending on the, the design of your website, this could work really well. If you find that it looks too small and elements are too small to access, then you might wanna go with adding tablet and mobile breakpoints and changing the layout of the website on those different breakpoints. Yeah, so here we can see like the only disadvantage of a one-to-one -one fixed width breakpoint is if you have elements all the way to the left and the right, then they don't go all the way to the left and the right side of the browser because it's fixed width. It doesn't allow for elements to be on the left and right side of the browser. So I'll go down, everything looks good, and looks good. So I'll go to browser stack one more time, and let's test on an iPad mini too. Okay, so here's the website on an iPad mini. So I'll scroll down and we can see that the entire website fits on the iPad mini. It's just doing something a little bit interesting there because it's on a simulation, but here is the entire website on an iPad mini. Looks good. And if I change the orientation of the device, it'll still fit the device. Perfect. Now I won't do any more simulations as I've already done a few tests on different devices, but that is a one-to-one -one fixed width breakpoint. Um, it can save you a lot of time if your site still looks good when on small devices. So that is it for day 10 and the one-to-one -one fixed width breakpoint. Tomorrow is day 11 and we'll be adding the tablet breakpoints to the website. News for you, awesome websites without code.